Hello everyone, this is Abhijit here. So today our topic is RLC protocol. So we have to understand what is RLC. So before starting that, uh, we have to try to understand in a simple way uh, what uh, we can say RLC. So understand like this, imagine you are sending a bunch of text messages to your friend over a walkie talkie with a bad connection. So RLC in 5G is like a helpful assistance for your walkie talkie conversation. So here uh, we are making sure that the message we get through that. So with the help of RLC protocol, RLC chops your message into a smaller chunk like uh, splitting the long text into the multiple messages. It then send them over the air uh, between device to the G node B and check if those messages arrive correctly or not. So if something get lost, so it asks the other side to resend it again. So keeping things in order actually. So RLC make sure the chunks that arrive at your friend in the right order so that they can understand the whole message actually. So RLC, uh, if we compare RLC, uh, we have three type of communication actually in RLC protocol. So we have three categories. First one we say that is called TM modes. This mode also we can say transparent mode. Second one we have that is called EVM mode. This one we say unacknowledged mode. And third one we have that is called AM mode. This one we say acknowledged mode. So the first one that we have transparent mode. This is the simplest mode. It just send the data packet exactly as they are without any change. Think of it like tossing over the box of your friend without any wrapping or checking like if you are transmitting anything. So this is good for the very short critical message uh, like RRC information that they can transmit here. Second one we have that is called unacknowledged mode. So unacknowledged mode is very important because uh, it can work for the real time application. So in this mode, RLC layer provide higher level of service than transparent mode because here we are adding the sequence number to the PDUs and allow those PDU if they lost okay uh, in the receiver side. However, in this one, we don't do any retransmission. So there is no retransmission if the packet lost or any enormous PDU. So unacknowledged mode is mostly suitable for VOIP services or VONR services that we can say or any real time application. So real time application, it's important because in the real time application, we don't want uh, overhead too much. So that's why this kind of services is good for the lower latency and uh, we can transmit. Third one we have here that is called unacknowledged mode. So this acknowledged mode we can say that this is most reliable mode because here RLC break the data packet into the pieces, send them then wait for the confirmation. Uh, this is called RLC acknowledged mode mode. So that's why in this RLC we have the term that is called ARC automatic repeat request. It means if any packet we send from the base station to the device, if the packet didn't receive, so we will request those packet again. So that's the reason acknowledge mode is more complex, more reliable, and we use for the data requiring guaranteed delivery actually. And also acknowledge mode involve extensive error correction mechanism, including the sequence numbering, acknowledgement of the received PDU, and retransmission of any lost PDU so that we do here. Now in simple term if we say RLC here like what is the function. So here we can say we have three mode mode reliability data change confirmation it means acknowledgement or not so mode we have tm mode mode we have um mode 
and mode we have em mode so reliability in the em mode is low here reliability is medium and here reliability is high data change so no in the em mode we don't change any data whatever the packet we receive we just transmit uh, in unacknowledged mode yes so we apply segmentation in acknowledge mode yes here also we apply segmentation so confirmation in tm mode no because we just pass the data so there is no arc process here no arc here also no arc process because it's a real time application we are using so we just forward the information we don't want any feedback here we have the feedback mechanism so that's why we apply arc so here we have so what kind of information we can use here so this one we can mostly we use for the signaling type message this one we use for the VIP or real-time application this one we use for the data file transmit like a bigger file we can transmit that we can use here now if you see here where RLC lies so RLC we can say that it's a middleman because RLC layer sit in the middle of the 5G in our protocol stack. So it act as a bridge between the PDCP layer and MAC layer. So if you see here, it act as a PDCP and the MAC layer. RLC protocol also here uh, we have the layer 2 protocol. So RLC operate under the layer 2 protocol. Uh, means it di directly with the organizing data into the frame from the transmission so what are the main function of RLC so RLC main function is a few function that is very important so first function we can see here RLC main function that is called error correction So where it is happening, air correction only happen to the AM modes. In acknowledge mode, RLC uses a system of confirmation and retransmission to ensure that all data arrive correctly. And this method we use ARC process. Second one is that in RLC mode, we do the segmentation and reassembling. So RLC can break down the large packet from the PDCP layer into the smaller piece that are easier to transmit over the wireless link. And at the receiving it, uh, it reassemble these pieces back into the original packet that we can provide. Third one that is called in sequence delivery. So this is only applicable to unacknowledged mode. So RLC makes sure the data packet arrive in the same order they were sent, which is especially important for certain time of traffication or traffic, we can say. The fourth one that is called duplicate detection. So RLC can prevent the processing the same packet multiple time. So it will save the bandwidth also. Now here uh, we can see we have different kind of scenario. Okay. So what are the scenario we have? So first we have TM entity. So here in this uh, picture uh, you can see that we have the different function of the TM entity. Uh, if you see we have the transmitter and we have the receiver so if the device is the transmitter uh, g0b is the receiver so they will transmit the data directly from here and it will come from this side so here you can see in this diagram that you can see here if the device is transmitting the data it means uh, it's a direct pass through because uh, here uh, the transparent rls entity receive the data unit in the form of TMC, TMD PDU. Okay, from the PDCP layer. 
and send them directly to the Mac layer for the transmission. So here in the transparent mode, they don't modify for the data. It means when they are do when they are not modifying any data, it means here we don't have any segmentation. No, there is no arc process. It means uh, we don't apply any arc process for the error correction. So since there is no segmentation, there is no need for retransmission if something get lost. Okay, so when do we use transparent mode? So transparent mode RLC ideal in this scenario, like a uh, short message. Uh, mostly we use if you see here, uh, the information we are transmitting for the BCCH, PCCH and the control common control channel. So these all are like RRC. So TM RLC mainly we use for the control channel in the 5G NR. BCCH is broadcast for paging and the RRC message so that we are transmitting this information. Okay, so here uh, we, we have the different scenario. Now we can see here. Second one is that unacknowledged mode RLC entity. So in unacknowledged mode RLC entity, if you see here, uh, we have a function. So like uh, unlike transparent mode, unacknowledged mode, when you are transmitting the data here, okay, it generate the RLC header and the store. It means once we apply here, we perform here segmentation. So unlike TM mode, unacknowledged mode RLC chops the larger data unit that is called SDU from the PDCP layer into the smaller or more manageable so that we can transmit the data. So this make transmission over the wire link, wireless link more efficient actually. Now, once you do the segmentation, we have to apply here header file and with the help of dedicated traffic channel, we transmit the data to this side. So when we receive the data, uh, we have to reassemble in the receiving end. So at the receiving end, on acknowledged mode, RLC entity reassemble the received data segment back into the original SDU. Also here we have the options in order delivery. So why not guarantee like AM mode, but unacknowledged mode RLC can optionally keep track of the sequence number assigned to each segment. So now here you can see in this one, we are not applying any header also. So that's why uh, like uh, like acknowledge mode, uh, it is similar to transparent mode. It means unacknowledged mode RLC does not send any confirmation request or any recent lost packet. It means whatever the information you are transmitting, just transmit. There is no scenario. So when we have to use unacknowledged mode, so like streaming serving, servicing or real time application or VIP services, VNR services. So this kind of services we use mainly actually. So if you, you have seen in LT also for the QCI one, we were configuring unacknowledged mode and for the QCI nine, we were configuring acknowledged mode. Same thing here if applicable. 5QI one or we can come configure unacknowledged mode and 5QI9, we can configure acknowledge mode. So same scenario. So these are the function of unacknowledge mode. Now, the last one that we have seen, it's a AM mode. So what is AM mode? So AM, it's simple term we say acknowledge mode so acknowledge mode in radio linkage tool is highly reliable communication mode and it designed for transmission of the data that required guaranteed delivery over the device to the g node b and this mode we use in a situation where integrity and the completeness of the transmitted data are very crucial actually. So AM would include a comprehensive, you can say that feature that ensure that reliable data transmission. So AM mode is bidirectional, RTM mode, UM mode was unidirectional. So AM mode support bidirectional data transmission. It means 
it enable both uplink and downlink data flow to use the acknowledgement mechanism for the error correction so that we are providing here second thing is that AI mode also use sequence numbering it means HRLC data PDU is assigned a sequence number which is used to maintain the order of PDU and identify any missing or out of the order PDU during the transmission. Uh, AM mode also perform arc process. It means acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement. In simple term, if you are transmitting any packet from base station to device, if you receive the packet, we send acknowledgement. If you don't receive the packet, we send not acknowledgement or negative acknowledgement. So the receiver sent acknowledgement for correctly received PDU and negative acknowledgement for missing or any packet they have the problem or any error in the PDU. So here we say feedback mechanism enable the sender to identify which PDU need to be retransmitted. So that's why uh, we use arc process or mechanism here to to correct the message actually also here we apply the segmentation and reassembling a mode allow the segmentation if the larger pdu into the smaller rlc pdu for transmission over the network so these are the functions they apply here in a mode we perform also in order delivery because by keeping the track of the sequence number and retransmitted missing segment a mode guarantee that the data is delivered in the same order it was sent. So this is very crucial for the application where order matter like uh, you are transmitting any file, anything. So where uh, we can use the acknowledge mode like data integrity is very critical. So file transmit, control message, any situation. So this kind of places we are using the acknowledge mode.